On this episode of Make Money in Property, we're going to talk about where to find the deals. Because if you want to make money in property, you've got to source great deals. So that's what this episode is all about, to show you where you should be looking, how to source these deals, but more importantly, how you make money. The property market's so hot, everything's selling way over market value. So how can I find property deals? So first and foremost, where's everyone's focus? Think about it for a minute. Everyone is focusing on property that's on the market, listed on Rightmove or Zoopla or with an estate agent. So if that's all where we're focusing and looking at, then of course, we're gonna see property that's always selling over market value. Now, even though we're seeing that, think about it from an investor's point of view. So for anyone who's looking to get a deal, there's a couple of principles for an investor. You want to be buying below market value, so you want to buy at discount. More importantly, you want to find property that needs value to be added, so a property that needs you know, renovated or brought up to a good standard, that's how you can increase the value of a property. And three, you've got to know your numbers. So when it's a challenging marketplace like it is at the moment, investors are looking, if you split the market up to, let's say the market is 100%, and split it up into different sections. So there's 20% at the top, 20% at the bottom, and then there's 60% in the middle. So the 20% at the top is the properties that are in walking condition. So think about that for a moment. Who's buying those walking condition properties? It's not investors, it is residential purchasers, it's first time buyers. So investors are buying rundown property that needs to be renovated, needs to, you know, get it to be walking condition and their target market to sell to is your first time buyers or residential purchasers. So that's why from an investor point of view, when they're looking on the market, they're looking at those types of properties that are walk-in because that's their target audience in terms of who's going to be buying the property. So they're looking at walking condition properties, not because they're going to buy those ones, but just to see what's selling. Where investors are going to be looking a lot in is the 20% at the bottom. And that is the poor condition properties. The properties are not in great condition because that's perfect for an investor to go in, buy those properties, renovate to add value, and then sell it to those first time buyers or residential purchasers. So when you add both those together, that's 40% of 100% of the market. So where's the other 60% in the middle? So I call this limbo. What do I mean by this? This is property that's not walking condition. It needs a bit of modernization, but at the same time, it's not in poor condition. So it's sitting in the middle of the market just now, and these are not motivated sellers. These are people who want to achieve full market value for the property. There's this illusion or perception that every property that's on the market selling way over market value. And that's not true. It's happened for a lot of the right properties in the right locations, but it's not every single property. So be mindful of that. And it's this idea that any property that's on the market is selling so quick. Again, that's the 20% at the top and 20% at the bottom. 40%, the 60% in the middle, those properties are still selling, but they're taking a lot longer in comparison to the top or the bottom of the market. And also with that in mind, they're not selling way over market value. They might sell a little bit over market value or at market value or a little bit of a discount. But most investors don't focus on that part of the market, that 60% in the middle. Why? Because they can't get the discounts they're looking for and there's not enough value to be added without a big enough discount. So this is why so many investors discount that middle part of the marketplace when the reality is there's other strategies such as assisted sales or delayed completions or lease options for those that are outside of Scotland. There's other strategies to control those assets to still make money. So first and foremost, if you're able to understand other strategies, so you're not just limited to buy and hold, so buy to let, or you're not just limited to buy and flipping, your other strategies and your toolbox as such, you can then take full advantage of all the market, especially this middle section, but more importantly, you're gonna know and see things what other people don't see because you're looking at it through the, the lens of a different strategy. Now, this is us just talking about properties on the market. Forget about that for a second because there's at the tune of 50 times more properties being sold off market than there are on the market, right? So there's way more property selling off market. You may ask yourself, well, who's selling off market? Well, this is where it becomes motivated sellers. 
Think about it. The average time it takes for a property to sell and the seller gets the money in their account is seven months. So many people think it's a lot quicker than that, but it's not. Think about that process. When a property is on the market, and let's say it's a great property, it's in working condition, then it's gonna get a lot of interest, and then after two or three weeks of being on the market, where the estate agent's drumming up a lot of interest, and the property's then gonna to go to a closing date, and if it sells over market value because of a lot of interest, there's maybe 10 plus potential buyers, there's only one property to buy, of course there's gonna be a bit of a bidding war, and that's why property's gonna sell over market value. But 99% of the time, those that are buying those properties are residential purchasers or first-time buyers. So once they get their offer accepted because they're going for a traditional, most likely, residential mortgage, you're talking about three to four months of a process for them to go through in order for the lender to release the funds for them to have their mortgage to buy that property and they've got to get their own affairs tidied up in terms of setting a, a move-in date and that's why it takes anywhere from four to seven months when it's going to be a sale taking place for a residential purchaser with the average being seven months. Investors can obviously move a lot quicker. Why? Because they get commercial funding, sometimes bridging finance, sometimes using cash to purchase, which means that they can close on a deal and be able to buy a property inside of four weeks. Investors are not buying these properties that we're talking about. This is why it's a longer process that goes through in order for someone to and buy that property, and then the seller ultimately getting the money that they agreed to sell the property on. So motivated sellers don't have seven months, they don't even have four months. Most of the cases, they don't even have a month. And that's why they're going to go and search online, how do I sell my house quick? How do I sell my house fast? Quick house sale. And this is where the professionals they market to, to work with motivated sellers who, let's be honest, find themselves in a situation where they're motivated to sell. There's many reasons why someone could be motivated. They're going through a divorce, they've lost their job, there's a bereavement in the family, it's an inherited property they want to get rid of, the property's in poor condition and they don't want to put it on the market, uh, the broken chain, which means a sale's fallen through and now they're motivated to sell, uh, there's maybe a distressed landlord. The common theme here is someone's motivated, they don't have time. And a trade-off in order to get their house sold quickly because they might get repossessed or in financial difficulty or whatever it may be, the trade-off for a quick sale is to sell at discount. So this is why the professional investor no longer looks on the market with estate agents to try and find the deals there. Sure, they build relationships with estate agents. Sure, they keep an eye on the market to see what others don't see because they have got other strategies to utilize the 60% of the marketplace that like I mentioned, but, 95% of their time is focused on finding motivated sellers off market of which there's so many. Think about it, what's going on in the world right now? A lot of chaos, a lot of financial difficulty and it's only going to get worse. And because of that, if you're able to market and, and target those types of motivated sellers, you're going to be able to support them by helping them move on. Now, let me just correct something here because I know some people might be thinking about that ethical approach. By no means am I talking about getting in here and trying to offer the biggest discount and literally take everything from that person. That person's obviously in a vulnerable situation, but they've left it too late. If they had more time, of course they'd put it on the market with an estate agent, but they can't. So this is why they've got to sell and arguably if they don't, don't sell, it's going to be worse off for them, hence why working with them, taking an ethical approach, you're going to be able to have a win-win strategy in terms of giving them what they need to move on and also from you as an investor, the incentive enough to buy that property so you can close on that inside of four weeks so it works for all parties involved. So. For anyone who's looking to find deals, especially when the market's hot right now, that's where your focus has got to be. Take it off of the 20% at the top of the market, 20% at the bottom of the market. Start thinking about the right strategies to take advantage of those properties that stick on the market a little bit longer, the 60%, but more importantly, really focus in on off-market marketing in order to find the right deals. So hey, some future podcasts will talk about some of those strategies for marketing. This is just to get your mind thinking Where's your focus just now? And stop focusing just on the market with estate agents. Start looking at the bigger picture of sourcing property. And that way, you're going to find some great deals. It's going to help you build your portfolio. It's going to help you flip property. It's going to help you build your wealth. It's going to help you ultimately become a property investor or developer.